Good afternoon. Welcome. Thanks for joining us again for our continuing town hall series. Uh, of course, myself, Matt Morton, city manager, and every month we're going to present a new look at a different department across the city. And it's so you can understand and we can communicate what we're doing, how we're doing it, and why we're doing it. And it all goes back to our mission at the city, which is delivering exceptional service by making citizens our priority. So our teams across the city, when we get around the table and we focus on how we're going to execute the council's priorities or strategic action plan or how we deliver service, our first thing in mind is how do we make you, our citizens, the priority? And so last week, if you, or last month, excuse me, if you'll recall, was Parks and Rec. We had a great look at how Parks and Rec lives that mission and how parks are more than places. It's about people. Uh, and so today we're going to discuss public works. And public works is the nuts and bolts of our city. They're the nuts and bolts of any city. And they're fond of saying they lay the groundwork. And I think you'll see that theme today during the presentation. Public works is responsible for keeping the essential elements of our city functioning. They keep us green. They keep it well maintained. They work on our parks, on our trails. And then through our special projects team, They've showcased a lot of skills and unique talents that benefit our community, not only in the work that's done and the quality of work that's accomplished, but in a, with a significant cost savings to our residents. And so here today with us to dive into Public Works and uh, everything they do, we have Matt Mansell. I should let you introduce yourself. You want to introduce yourself, Matt? <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me, Mr. Morton. Uh, you know, definitely... Uh, been with the city for just over a year. Uh, came out of um, 23 plus years with the Air Force, pretty much doing the same thing, background in um, installation support or mission support. Uh, so transitioned over into public works with the city and it has been a mile a minute working with the professionals over at the public works department ever since then. Um, and, and you're right, you know, we do lay the groundwork. Uh, very proud to say that our employees are, are some of the, the most um, you know, proud um, employees, and, and they take the most pride in, in what they do every day. Uh, you know, but it's it's kind of behind the scenes. So, uh, what what I hope to share with you later today, as we go through a little bit of a presentation, uh, is kind of you know what that is, and 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 uh, you know what it brings to the citizens of our community. But uh, so, thanks for having me uh, today. I do have. Um, my public works manager with me to kind of bail me out whenever I get in trouble. The new public works manager. Congratulations, Marvin. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, Marvin, if you'll introduce yourself a little bit. Marvin Calderon. I've been with the city for six years, and it's been a roller coaster ride the six years, but it's been fun. It's been great watching the whole department grow uh, as I grow with the department. Um, I came in as a maintenance tech, and um, you know, recently Matt promoted me to manager, and it's Looking, just looking forward to making the department continue to grow. Yeah, I think, I think there's a couple of cool highlights before we get going, and one is, uh, to your point, the pride that Public Works shows. And I think, you know, when this COVID-19 pandemic started, and as a, as a nation, as a city, as communities, we started redefining and really looking at what the term and what it means to be essential and the essential nature of the workforce. And I think we learned really quickly a lot of the things we take for granted from Public Works, and we, we drive around, and I drive around the city, I'm always so impressed with how uh, well kept everything is, and that everything functions, our bridges, uh, our cycling, you know, pedestrian pathway, bridges are maintained, our trails look great, um, things are getting fixed, roads are patched, and it's Public Works, and, and we don't, you know, pin a badge on it, it's not as glamorous at times as maybe, um, you know, some fire or other departments, but, but just as essential of a service that keeps us moving every day, keeps our sense of place and our placemaking and our pride in community strong and so really grateful. And then Marvin, your story. You've been here six years. Um, you started out, you said, as a maintenance worker. Maintenance worker. And if I'm not mistaken, public works manager is the uh, third highest position in the organization. I mean, the next evolution would be assistant public works director. So uh, it's fantastic that we continue to grow our staff positively. We continue to have opportunity. And we have a lot of folks like yourself, Marvin, Matt talks a lot about, about your commitment and your expertise and, and all the things you bring to the table that we have those, those capacities to grow internally uh, and, and you know, develop staff and professionalize. And that's a theme today of the topic is how for the first time in the city of Palm Coast history, you, you guys are leading the charge on professionalizing the public works department. I think it's really exciting. 
Um, we're definitely going to get into that. So I think if the next uh, step, if I'm not right, uh, you guys have prepared a, a slideshow, a visual presentation to narrate so we can really share with the community today before we get to the Q&A what it is Public Works does, how you do it, and what the future of service delivery in Public Works looks like for the citizens of Palm Coast. Absolutely. I think, you know, it, it's important to uh, kind of provide an overview of, you know, what the different divisions and, and crews in our department are responsible for. Um, we, we provide that sometimes through our uh, Citizens Academy, but not everybody gets the opportunity to go through that. So uh, that, that's what we hope to, to give you today with this uh, presentation. Uh, so Tyler, if you'd pull that up. All right, so I'm going to do the very first slide, then turn it over to you guys, because it's, it's uh, a great recognition, and the city as a whole just received the Voice of the People Award, uh, which comes out of the National Citizen Survey, which is that independent survey we do every other year. It's in partnership with the International City and County Manager Association. And so getting this award, being selected, there was only 19 awards given uh, across the country through, through this award program, and only seven of those awards were for Voice of the People, which essentially is m most or, or significant improvement in, re in delivering on what our community says uh, is exceptional. And how we know that is because a lot of these key metrics, and some of those that are directly applicable to public works, as far as quality of community, satisfaction with neighborhoods, this all goes back in large part to the work that public works does. So we wanted to point that out. and. And I think, you know, again, the, the professionalism, Matt, you've brought in the last year and the continuing work that Public Works does um, is, is part of that. So we thank you guys for that and want to recognize your contribution uh, to the city, to the community. And uh, if you'll take us through the slideshow and, and show and tell us what Public Works does. All right. Thank you, Mr. Morton. All right. So, uh, again, we're just going to provide an overview of um, some of the things that our department is doing as well as the structure that that we have within the department with the different divisions as, as mr. Morton mentioned we do like to say that we lay the groundwork uh, I think that's because uh, you know we're definitely responsible for maintaining all of the things that uh, you know sometimes we take for granted every day um, it, it's the roads it's the right-of-ways uh, the landscaping signage and and those kind of things throughout the city uh, that you know, you drive past and you don't really think about until you notice something is wrong. So we're hoping that we do a good enough job that maybe you don't notice that there's anything wrong very often. Uh, but we do know that, uh, you know, there are times when um, things need to get done and we rely on you to bring that to our attention. So uh, we do thank you for that. So our team also provides um, maintenance to some of the internal things um, that, that, that we have within the city, and that's our you know, facilities and our fleet and our equipment items, so we'll get into all of that as well. All right, so we, we have uh, four basic divisions within our department and many different crew breakouts within those too. So we'll try to give you an overview of um, just kind of the main things that they're responsible for and the scope of which, um, it, you know, they, they take on each day. So. The first uh, division that I'd like to talk about is um, the one that I rely on to keep me out of trouble every day, right? It's our <laughs> administrative support. So we have a wonderful uh, admin manager, Soraya Zapata, and I could not bring her in here today because she told me she didn't, um, you know, want to steal my thunder. But uh, really, she keeps us on track every day with the staff. Um, and, and they do. They assume the responsibility for all of our day-to-day -day operations from, um, you know, our budgets, um, to our filing, to the correspondence, uh, to really being the, the, the front face to our customers as well. So they're the ones that you'll talk to if you call the department and have a question. Uh, and, and we're really lucky to have quite a few outstanding professionals within our admin staff. Uh, as you can see, the smiling faces here, these are the people that I rely on, as I say, to keep me out of trouble every day. But. Uh, and we do, we have some pictures as we go through here, just because I want to highlight, uh, you know, the individuals that are, are taking on the, the workload every day uh, and give them the, the credit that they deserve. Uh, our largest division, I believe, is the streets division. Uh, and you can see that they take on special projects, traffic si sign and signal crew, uh, our tree crew, which is fairly new, 
and I'll allow Marvin to chime in on that in a little while because he kind of grew that. Um, and then our landscape and mowing operations, which I know you see them out every day. They're very, uh, you know, forward facing within our operations. Uh, and and I, w I will say, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier our, our citizen survey uh, and the response we got. And I know that a lot of that is because of the hard work that these guys do. Uh, I tell a story from time to time about, uh, I think it was my first week here on the job and I was driving down Palm Coast Parkway and my father-in-law was in the car and he just happened to look over into the uh, nice decorative medians that we have and mentioned, uh, you know, how, how much he thought of the grass. He's like, wow, look at that. Look at the St. Augustine grass. It, it's beautiful, you know. Um, and I told him I just might happen to know the guy that <laughs> takes care of that. Um, so, you know, it, it definitely is a lot of pride in what they do, and, and they work hard to make sure that our citizens have a beautiful city that they can be proud of. Our special projects crew, uh, they're responsible for road maintenance um, and concrete sidewalks and pathways, and that's kind of where they started from, right? There's definitely been an evolution over time on what they do. Um, you know, just to give you some numbers, they, they're responsible for over 551 linear miles or 1,114 lane miles of streets. And obviously that grows as we continue to develop. Um, and then the sidewalks and pathways as well. There's over 125 linear miles of sidewalks and pathways. Uh, and, and these folks have the expertise to take care of that in-house. Uh, and we're continuing to expand upon that as well uh, with, you know, better equipment that uh, can do, uh, you know, higher quality repairs, uh, such as our, I think it's called a hot box, is that? Yeah, we're getting an asphalt uh, hot box so yeah. we can do in-house asphalt repairs instead of contracting it out. That's just another way for us to save money, um, you know, save the citizens money and respond to uh, potholes and, and customer service requests faster than we would normally would. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, one thing is the savings, but the, you know, one of the more exciting things about having that capability is rather than now wait or be at the mercy of a contractor to mobilize, sometimes that can be a couple of days and it can get frustrating for folks when they put a work ticket in and they're waiting, um, go right out and, and take care of the problem. Absolutely. And, and the quality of repair definitely goes up to, you know, a, a, a pothole repaired um, and in that manner, will that repair will last a lot longer than uh, through the cold patch methods that we used before or like you said, relying on a contractor to take care of it for us. Um, but like I said, this is an evolution within the division. So they kind of started doing that. Um, and now they are really the go-to operations within our city for any kind of project. Um, Marvin, can you kind of expand upon some of the things that they've been doing for our city? Yeah, they, I mean, they, they originally started off as a sidewalk maintenance crew. They were just, that was the original plan for that crew. And then they just uh, started identifying people with different skill sets. And we started taking on, you know, higher level projects. And, um, you know, by identifying all the skill sets that we had in-house, we were able to, again, respond to, uh, you know, needs that the residents have quicker than we would, you know, by sending it out to a contractor. Um, some of the projects we worked on this year, um, it was uh, the refurbishing of um, Waterfront Park, Indian Trail Sports Complex. We're in, we're about 95% done over there with the uh, baseball fields. Um, and uh, we're doing some uh, remodeling over at the Public Works facility now. And um, we're currently working on that. We're about 90% done on that. And all these projects have been done in-house um, to some cost savings to, to us and the city and the residents too. But uh, they could, like Matt said, they continue to develop. And I mean, the sky's the limit for them pretty much. And it works pretty much with every every employee at uh, Public Works. They all have different skill sets. It's a very diverse group, and you can really throw any type of challenge at them, and they'll respond well. Yeah, I think some of the most visible, like you said, uh, that our citizens will notice this year would be the waterfront park pier refurbishment, as well as the uh, current operations going on at Indian Trails uh, to renovate the ball fields. Yeah, I mean, my, my son plays there every every day, and he's asking me when, when the field's going to be ready. I can't wait to play, and he, he's loving it. Good. Yeah. All right, so moving on to our uh, sign and signal crew. Um, so these guys are responsible for 61 traffic signals and over 11,000 um, street and directional signs throughout the city. Uh, so they keep them in good repair. They do the inspections and maintenance. Uh, you know, to make sure that everything is good. They also handle um, our street sweeping 
operations right now uh, through some augmentation from other staff, but they're primarily responsible. Um, the the, the uh, fact that, I mean, if you think about 11,000 plus um, signs throughout the city and, you know, it's basically four guys. Yeah, four guys taking care of all of that. Um, 61 traffic signals right now, like I said, I think that'll definitely grow as we continue to expand. Uh, but, you know, it, we also look to find ways to uh, allow them to do their job, um, you know, safer. And uh, one addition that we were able to share with you this year that was added um, in FY20 was this articulating arm bucket truck uh, that allows them to repair signals without having to shut down a lane, but it also keeps them out of the lane uh, of traffic while they're doing the work. So um, definitely a good addition for them safety-wise and operationally. Uh, they can do the inspections faster, uh, higher quality, uh, and, and like I said, without much disturbance to our, uh, our drivers throughout the city. So this is uh, some of the operations that they do and, and you know, things that uh, kind of go unnoticed, I, th I think, is where do the signs really come from, right? So they have an in-house operation to where they can uh, print the signs and, and put them together uh, so that, you know, we're not having to uh, rely on um, ordering them or having a contractor come in and take care of that. Uh, definitely speeds up the response time for these repairs. And Marvin, is, isn't there a requirement on the, uh, the time that we have to respond to some of those? Yeah, stop signs is usually 24 hours because it's something critical that, that impacts traffic flow. Um, regulatory signs, we, we have to inspect them within um, 12 hours, I think. Good. All right, so like I said, tree crew, I'm going to let Marvin talk about this because this is kind of his baby. So, Yeah, the tree crew kind of uh, developed from the neighborhood swale maintenance crew. Um, when I was the crew lead for that, for that crew, uh, I got handed a stack of uh, work orders, um, and we kind of took off running with it. First, it was just myself and another person, and then it kind of grew to four people. Uh, we, do, you know, we identified the need for an in-house tree crew. That was another thing that we used to subcontract out. Uh, now they've taken on a bunch of different things. They handle fire mitigations. They do the site distance. They um, respond to every single request that comes in through, um, you know, field service lightning. Uh, they've also continued to develop because now they do uh, guardrail repair in-house. We no longer subcontract that out either. So it's continuing to identify the talent that's in-house so we can continue to, you know, keep everything in-house and just move forward with that. So just a couple of things, takeaways from that. Um, you know, we definitely rely on these for hazard mitigation. If you see, you know, a, a tree, a hazardous tree, um, something like that, they, they can take care of that. But something where they were able to impact our emergency operations uh, preparation as well was they trained uh, most of our department and some other uh, yeah. department personnel, uh, I think in stormwater division and fire department. Yeah, we coordinated with the fire department and we had a Sawyer class and we trained uh, almost every single department in the city as far as uh, utilities, stormwater, public works. We all had... Um, I think it was about two months of training in the back where we screened dirt, where we have a screening operation. We kind of did a uh, land clearing operation. We knocked down some trees and, and we used those trees for training. So that, that was some, you know, thing that they helped out with. But like I said, they continue to develop and, and again, sky's the limit for them also. Yes, I think we take for granted sometimes. We know the terminology, we know the lingo. And so I heard you Matt earlier talking about fiscal year and, and Marvin, you just said Sawyer class. and. So essentially what we did and the, the theory was to broaden our capability and to add to our responsiveness, especially in times of emergency when we're doing hurricanes, when we're, we, the Sawyer class is, is the class, those who don't know, to learn how to properly and safely and effectively operate a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. It talks about PPE, which is personal protective equipment and how to operate, maintain, safely inspect and utilize a chainsaw. And so we, again, in that vein of making sure that all of our folks are trained, their training is diverse, their training is applicable to what we need, especially not just in the work week, but in, in times of emergency. We identified folks, they went through this Sawyer or chainsaw, a chainsaw training class, and now we have a broader capability than we've ever had to be responsive, not just to the day-to-day -day work as needs may ebb and flow or arise, but for wildfire mitigation, for emergency hurricane response, 
Uh, and I think, that, again, that just goes back to that commitment of leadership in the Public Works Department to adapt, to professionalize, uh, and, and to continue to push forward to make sure we're delivering exceptional service, quality service, that's, that's competent to the community. Another thing we mentioned, and I want to pause on really quick, Marvin, is you mentioned field service lightning, and, and I'm sure a lot of folks don't know what that is. We're going to, or we have a presentation coming in the near future to council about where we're at with the status of our Palm Coast Connect and, and the things that work through that. Palm Coast Connect is more than an app. It does a lot of things as far as efficiency, accountability, and transparency for the city of Palm Coast. One of those things is, a, is the component we called field service lightning essentially allows us now, allows you as a resident to create an electronic work order, to have that work order track throughout the process, that informs you as a resident knowing when and how we receive the request, when things are being done. In fact, we're going to talk about an example of that later where a pothole was literally, literally filled overnight, and that's no longer the one-off. This is a more common occurrence now with this field service lightning. From <coughs> the managerial standpoint, from the operations standpoint, the exciting thing has been you get that work order in real time. It's distributed out to the field in real time. It's completed and notated in real time and, and back. And not only you as a manager, but the citizen knows uh, that the work's been done. So we'll get into that a little bit more. But it's these, these trainings, these new technologies, these systems that complement the extraordinarily talented women and men we have in the department that are allowing us to be more effective, more transparent, more accountable uh, in, in delivering services. So I think these are really strong themes that we've seen in the last year and a half you know emerge in this new public works department that that again is for the first time seeking professional accreditation uh, to, to overall e increase that quality and competency that our community knows uh, that we're, do we're on the right track we're doing the right things yeah. yeah so when you talk about field service lightning too one of the things that I appreciate as a director is the ability to really you know do the analytics um, and look for gaps in training, gaps in uh, capability. So you know, we can tell through uh, maybe a, a prolonged response time that there's a need to look at something um, to determine if, well, you know, wh why did that take so long to get accomplished? Maybe we don't, didn't have the resources we needed on hand to do it. Um, and, and are there ways that we can solve that? Yeah, it, it allows us to do that data benchmarking. I know it's a little different, but in utilities, as folks are aware, we were able to see through those analytics that we had an extraordinary number of call-outs on pep tank systems between 5 p.m. and usually about 7.30 to 8 p.m. And traditionally, those have been staffed through overtime. And what we realized was the data was strong enough to support augmenting the normal operations of those crews, having them come in a little later and stay on a little later. One is more effective. We're, we're out in the field. We're out doing it already instead of having to be called out on an OT process. But two, it's more cost effective because now this is part of the regular shifting for these new folks rather than having to coordinate and pay for overtime. So it's exciting that you're, I know you've only been doing the field service lightning process just for a few short months, but already you're learning uh, and being able to visually see and understand where gaps are, where we can augment, where we need more resources, more training. So uh, that's re it's really encouraging that we're you know, doing this performance and, and database management that really drives efficiency. Yeah, it's been it's been great um, an impl implementation into the uh, department because it's not only us using it. We started with the public works, the streets department, as his initial you know goal to get that working, but now we've tried we started expanding it into the facilities and into fleet and starting to track all that stuff. So it's been great. It's a big asset. And just last thing before we move on as a reminder. We talk about field service lightning. We talk about these modules that we're creating new systems. We're able to, you know, track and monitor and, and benchmark. And that's being created with the current licensing we have, with the current staff we have. Uh, you know, having that flexibility in house to design these things we need to, and execute them is tremendous. And, and so, you know, having that capability. These are again capabilities we're, we're deploying that we have in house. And and those changes can happen in real time. That's something that I've been impressed with. You yeah. know, if we if we don't have the data on something we need, or we we need a new block added somewhere, or or expanded, um, you know, our, our our team here in the city can do that. Usually the same day that we ask. Yeah, it just takes me an email, and then within the hour, he, I get a response back. Hey, you're ready to go. Yeah, um, it's amazing how fast, how agile the the system really is. So yeah. All right. Well, I didn't want to sidetrack us yet on that, but good. But uh, yeah. yeah, thanks. All right.
So, you know, the, the next uh, division we'll talk about within, or I guess crew within the uh, streets division is our landscape crew. Um, and, you know, I think the title says a lot of what they do, but really it, it does not, um, you know, pay homage to the scope of which they are responsible for. And I do have some numbers here just because I want to try to, um, you know, blow you away with the data, right? So 93 decorative medians that they're responsible for throughout the city. Uh, that's about 367 acres of grass, uh, 112 linear miles of edging that they have to do, and 356 irrigation zones, uh, of which each zone has countless individual sprinkler heads. And, yeah, it's it's yeah. countless. I mean, if we went out and counted, it was it'd be a big number. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it, it's definitely a, a, a huge task, and as you know, it, it's kind of cyclical too. We're luckily getting um, to the point where the grass is growing a little slower at this point, so we can start to focus on uh, some more of the, uh, you know, the detail work that we do around this time of year. But as we progress through the summer, um, when it's hot and we're getting a lot of moisture too, a lot of rain, uh, and the grass continues to grow, um, it, it is definitely a full. Um, you know, pedal pedal to the metal operation that these guys uh, have to have to take on. Um, so something you know, we talked about field service lightning. We're also looking at uh, leveraging some of our GIS capabilities in this, so that we're tracking with those two um, capabilities our uh, cut cycles. So you know, wh what kind of rotation is the best? Um, that we can do with the resources that we have versus what is the expectation that our citizens and our, our council um, expect of us uh, when it comes to landscape operations, uh, you know, and, and that kind of equates to how tall is the grass is yep. what our citizens see. So um, we're definitely trying to, to look at ways to, to make that um, more efficient. But so we also have, um, in addition to the, the landscape crew that I just spoke about that is more responsible for um, medians and right-of-way mowing. Uh, we have our neighborhood mowing crew, and this is one of our least uh, uh, understood crews, I think. So, you know, we have 13,000 vacant lots within the city, and these guys maintain the, the swale frontage on those vacant lots, and really the purpose is to, to keep water flowing within that uh, swale system uh, so that there, there aren't uh, vegetation blocks within uh, those areas. They also take care of non-decorative medians. So some of our neighborhoods, you'll see they have kind of an island area in, in different um, locations, and, and they take care of those. Uh, they also do line of sight clearing within neighborhoods. Uh, so that, you know, if you don't know what line of sight clearing is, um, I think if, you, if you've ever pulled up to a stop sign and tried to look left or right and you couldn't see around that corner, um, well, that's line of sight issues. So we, we try to take care of that uh, through some of the, the uh, equipment and uh, expertise that we have. And then always an issue is trash collection and litter control. I think it's constant. Uh, so we have a couple of guys that uh, we have one full time that is responsible for, um, you know, emptying of trash cans, picking up litter on, on right of ways and uh, those sorts of things. And then we also augment that with all the other staff we have. Uh, personnel, basically everyone on a mower has a bucket, has a, has a grabber, uh, and they, they're picking as they go. We have individuals that we divert from other, um, you know, work assignments when we know that we have heavy litter issues going on uh, to focus on those kind of things. Uh, and it, it's amazing the amount of litter that, that we pick up. Uh, we've had to expand to two dumpsters in the yard at all times just to, to be able to, wow. to move it. As a... Uh, Again, on Tuesday night at the council uh, meeting, this issue again came up of Public Works looking at the vacant lot swale mowing program and maybe ideas that um, could help augment that, whether it be a, a service charge or, you know, again, 13,000 vacant lots that the city maintains. And if it's developed, if I own the home or if I have a building up, then obviously it's my responsibility to maintain and, and mow that swale. So um, that's a, a, a relatively hot topic and it's going to be coming I know for a lot of discussion and consideration by the public on you know should vacant lot owners have some obligation towards the cost of that maintenance um, as it is as you mentioned I mean the essential nature one it's a visual issue it's a you know probably a pest control issue most importantly those swills have to be maintained because they 
those 13,000 lots have an impact on the flow and water quality and uh, um, reduction of stormwater uh, through, through this well system. So very, very important issue I know we're going to be discussing here shortly. And, and I apologize. I think Marvin did correct me on this slide. It's, it's closer to 17,000 vacant lots right now. Yeah, it's somewhere between 15 and 17,000 oh, 17? vacants. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I keep hearing 13 too, so that's part of this conversation is yeah. I know we're looking at how many really is, getting them mapped, yeah. what it means, you know, lineal. That, that's a full-time crew. That's mowing. Obviously, there they are. Yeah. That's mowing, you know, residential neighborhoods. Absolutely. And, you know, we definitely hear our citizens. I think that the two main things that I hear, uh, number one is, you know, how, how are we paying for these operations and how should we be paying for these right. operations? Uh, and the other thing is kind of the uh, misunderstanding of how we, how we talk about it. So, um, you know, I've, I've heard some feedback on, well, the, the lot, uh, the empty lot next to me is, is not as pretty as my lot. Um, and, and again, we, we go back to, um, our intent is not to landscape an empty lot. It is to maintain the swale on the lot frontage. So I think there's there's just some, uh, you know, message delivery that we can improve yep, upon yep. in there as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we might be getting a little esoteric, but I know one of the one of the eight principles of public sector finance, which I know our community thinks about all the time. They may not articulate it in these terms, but we're always thinking about it as equity. What's equitable? Who pays what and why? And we talk, you know, that happens when we talk about user fees for a service like playing golf. It may come up uh, as a user fee when you're swimming or playing tennis or engaged in a program you choose to act in at the community center. And this is one of those continuing ends of the conversation where we're going to talk about equity in terms of what we're going to do as a community. So. So th this is just uh, some action shots of our landscape crews. And again, you know, I definitely think this is uh, something that our citizens probably see the most of within our operations, just because it's so visible. Um, you know, they're out there in the right of ways, they're in the medians, uh, they're, they're maintaining uh, the things that, you know, we really get to appreciate every day as we drive around this city. So um, definitely appreciate all of their hard work. All right, so moving on to our one of our other divisions uh, facilities is a uh, a division that we've really just started to to grow within our organization um, I apologize looking at my notes here so uh, you know facilities kind of came from uh, just a, a few people that we had that were responsible for some general labor activities throughout the city uh, you know, if we needed some things moved around, if we needed, um, obviously, uh, you know, like this room here that we're in today, reconfigured for uh, one type of meeting or another, they were responsible for that, and they still are today. Uh, if we needed some, some boxes moved from one location to another, they'd kind of start, uh, they'd, be, they'd be the ones that you'd call. If you want a desk moved, if you want those kind of things. Um, but when we look at what facilities maintenance is truly responsible for from a uh, public works, uh, you know, professional perspective. It is maintaining our city-owned uh, properties and assets, and ensuring that we get the longest life cycle out of those. Uh, so that's that's kind of where we're going with it. Um, and you know, we, we were able to kind of carve out a little bit of our internal operations without uh, growing staff, to, so that they could be dedicated. Um, know towards those efforts so we now have a dedicated facility maintenance supervisor uh, we've centralized resources and budgets uh, within his control to take care of those things and now we focus on preventative maintenance and and really next level uh, facility life cycle management as we uh, you know move forward one of the things that uh, that Fred as our uh, facilities maintenance supervisor is responsible for is also our facilities landscaping crew so you know, we talked about streets department has landscape uh, personnel, but uh, they don't take care of the grass around City Hall or the, or the grass around Public Works or the grass around utility, right? We have a dedicated crew uh, that does that, and a lot of that has to do with uh, the fact that, you know, how, how we're budgeting for some things. You know, utility is an enterprise fund, so they pay for some of those services. Um, you know, the general fund pays for some, so this allows us to focus efforts along with the allocations where where it belongs, um, and you know we we've got a few guys that uh, that spend a lot of time doing that. One of the things that I want to talk about that they also do 
um, that really blew me away when I came on board was um, the, uh, the the well sites and the uh, lift stations that we have throughout the city, right? So um, they are responsible for taking care of, uh, I, I think we got the wrong slide, that's why I keep going back and forth, but so they are responsible for taking care of every single one of those and, and they're in the hundreds right now So they, and spread throughout the, the county in some cases, even some of them on the borders of what we would consider our, our city, uh, you know, city border. So um, definitely a, a lot that they're responsible for taking care of. Um, one of the things that we do that's kind of unique to us too is uh, pond maintenance. Um, and, and, you know, we have several throughout the city uh, that our streets guys take care of, and also our our facility landscape folks take care of the ones that you see next to the fire stations and, and those kind of locations. Um, they take care of the signage, um, and and then you know obviously all of the uh, the beautiful landscaping around our facilities. So yeah, I think I, I have that number here now. It's 250 plus well sites and lift stations throughout the city, um, and those. We just now started mapping those on GIS as well so that we can keep track of when the last time it was mowed, any issues that we found with it, uh, you know, and keep track of that rotation as well. Um, all right, so this crew is our uh, facilities maintenance crew. Um, they're the ones that are out there doing the preventative maintenance on it. You'll see them doing some painting operations. You'll see them doing, uh, you know, power washing. Uh, they take care of you know, the HVAC systems and the, the pest control contracts and all of those kind of things that, that we have in place to make sure that, you know, we get that longest life cycle out of the facilities that our, our citizens have invested their tax dollars in. Uh, so definitely an important, important job. So right now we have, you know, 19 city-owned buildings, um, and those are main buildings like the one we're in right now, City Hall. Uh, and 41 different outbuildings, which could include anything from, you know, a gazebo uh, to, you know, a, a small um, maintenance shed, uh, you know, those kind of things. And, and then our, some of our parks facilities as well. All right, so you can see some of the things that they do. Um, and one of the things that we added this year I wanted to talk about was, uh, you know, the, the tank maintenance. So we've gotten a fuel scrubber and they've been kind of helping with that along with some of our fleet folks uh, to go out and um, scrub the fuel in, in our storage tanks. Uh, it, this is something that we used to pay on average about $7,000 every time that a contractor would come out to do one or two tanks. Uh, and now we have a trailer and we can do it in-house um, and we can do it on a, on a you know, much shorter uh, cycle to ensure that the fuel that we have within the tanks uh, is clean, it, it's, it's not gonna damage the vehicles, it doesn't go stagnant. Uh, and, and then it, it also helps us with emergency operations preparation because we can store fuel uh, in higher quantities and for longer periods because of that capability. Uh, all right, and fleet division. So, uh, you know, I hold a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, love in my heart towards fleet because part of my background uh, when I first joined the Air Force was a heavy equipment mechanic. Um, so these guys definitely, uh, you know, take care of quite a few pieces of equipment. I think we have uh, 320 white fleet vehicles. And when we say white fleet, we're talking about, you know, what you and I would consider, you know, a regular car, pickup truck, and those kind of things. Um, we also have 43 emergency response vehicles, which is, you know, our fire trucks and our paramedic vehicles, uh, and 215 pieces of heavy equipment. Um, they, they take care of basically everything that's got a, an engine attached to it. And when we talk about things like handheld pieces of equipment, um, you know, that, that's countless across our departments. Um, everything from a, a, a weed eater to a uh, power washer to a, a small portable generator, um, those things show up at their door and they have to know how to work on all of it. Um, and they do a great job of, of uh, maintaining uh, all of those things. Um, I think uh, Roger is, is one of our longest uh, tenured employees within the department. Yeah, I think yeah. he's uh, around uh, 14 years, I think. 
15 years, yep. So he's our uh, fleet maintenance supervisor, and I think he knows the history of every single vehicle that we have, where it's been, everything that's been done to it, uh, all rolling up in his noggin. He takes a lot of pride in what he does, um, and, and I know uh, he'll let you know if you don't treat his equipment right, too. <laughs> but it, it's good things. Um, definitely blown away by the fact that basically eight mechanics taking care of, you know, you're talking about, um, you know, five to six hundred pieces of, of equipment. So, and you can see here just the diverse uh, pieces that we have within our fleet. And we're, you know, we're talking everything from, uh, you know, the lawn mowers to construction equipment and emergency response vehicles. Uh, these guys know how to take care of it all. Uh, they do most of the work in house. They do do, they do manage some uh, contracted work. But if we can. If we can do it in-house, we prefer to do it that way. Uh, we just have more control over cost and schedule and keeping things in service as long as we can. All right, so I think the next thing we have is something that uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of. Oh, yeah. yeah. And our very own Tyler is hiding here in the audience. Didn't you take charge of this video? And the team. So uh, that Patience was team, yeah. Tyler, Kim, and Angie. And uh, um, it takes, we always say it takes all the teams working together. And uh, Tyler, you've done, and communications has done some extraordinary work and always willing to jump in and do something and pivot, which has been great. And uh, as much as this is going to highlight public works, I want to be thanking our communications team. And our Absolutely. Guests in the booth, uh, for yet another uh, quality <laughs> product. Uh, so thank you, Tyler, and thank you, Kim. So yeah, we had a, an opportunity come down uh, a few weeks ago through the American Public Works Association uh, where they uh, asked for uh, people to submit videos of a day in the life of public works uh, as part of a contest they, they were doing of highlighting your department. Uh, so I reached out to our comm team and I said, hey, you know, can you help me here? I'm, I'm not very creative when it comes to putting things like this together, but you know, I'm, I'm proud of the, the folks that we have in our department and I really want to highlight the things that they do. So if you have any ideas, can you help me out? Uh, and I was blown away by the, the, the job they did on this. The creativity, yeah. the professionalism, it's great. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if, if we want to announce it now or later. but uh, Announce it and show it. Let's, we're here. Let's go. Uh, we got word on Tuesday that we won the contest. Um, and and I, I have no doubt that it's because of uh, two things. Number one, the quality of the, the video that was done by our folks. Uh, and number two, the, the pride that we speak about when it comes to our employees and, and the hard work that they do. Uh, one thing that I'm not sure contributed to it was my acting skills. Um, so you'll have to... Uh, we'll let the community judge that here in just a minute. <laughs> Tyler, if you would. Thank you. Welcome to the City of Palm Coast. I'm Matt Mansell, the Director of Public Works. Our department provides a full service operation and I'm here to give you a tour in the day in the life of our team. At the start of each day, 74 hardworking men and women fan out into the city. Their goal is to make our hometown beautiful and bring pride to the residents. We have nine different divisions in public works. We like to say, we lay the groundwork because our department creates maintains and improves the infrastructure of Palm Coast. Our crews maintain all the median landscape throughout 60 square miles of the city. It's the lush greenery and manicured scenery that draws new residents and visitors each year. We even have some cool tools that help us cut grass in grounds more difficult to navigate, like this remote control lawnmower. We're also unique in that we perform pesticide treatment and manage our own irrigation system. In neighborhoods, our crews mow the vacant lots connected to swales, which are part of the citywide drainage system. They work hand in hand with other city departments to maintain them, so neighbors can live alongside neatly kept properties. On top of that, we have a specialized hazard tree crew that removes dead trees as part of storm prep or wildfire mitigation, which are two big prevention measures we take to keep everyone safe and their property protected. The same crew also goes out after a hurricane to clear roads for emergency vehicles. 
you can find our special projects team working on a number of really cool capital improvement projects. Throughout the summer, they've been regrading the ball fields at the sports complex, so local kids have a safe and comfortable grounds to play on this fall. They also construct all city walking paths and sidewalks. Quality of life is our specialty. Our city facilities are spread out around town. We have a specific crew who manage the landscaping at these spots, providing color and friendly vibes. We also have a team that maintains those buildings and they also set up city events, too. Back here at the department headquarters, our fleet maintenance techs are working to get our heavy equipment, white fleet, and at times, even a fire truck back in service. Just across the yard is the sign and signal shop. Our specialists there maintain 9,000 street and directional signs and 58 traffic signals. Since we are located by the Atlantic coast and are subject to annual hurricanes, one of their most critical signs to manage are the evacuation signs for all emergencies. During the end of summer, hot weather and tropical climate guarantee storm prep. At our yard, we offer residents free sandbags and sand to protect their homes and businesses. Inside our offices, you'll find the Public Works Administration. They manage the day-to-day -day operations, including budgets, invoicing, and reports. Our entire team is like a family. We strive to do as much work in-house because of the top-notch workmanship of our crews. These men and women lay the groundwork of our future every day. It is an honor to serve the city of Palm Coast.
procedure and policy to the council and they'll review it and they'll send it back to us letting us know if we need to make an improvement or if they'll take the policy that we submitted and cross-reference it against national uh, procedures from other uh, public works departments throughout the, the country and to see if we fall in line with them. Uh, if we don't, they'll let us know and we'll just make the improvements that are necessary. Yeah, so it is, it is kind of a long process, one, one to three years they say. We're, we're going to take our time and make sure that we do it right, uh, that we get the most benefit out of it as a department. Uh, but, you know, when, when our council talks about their priorities, one of the things that, that they mention is succession planning. Uh, and I think this is uh, definitely a process that is going to help us codify what it is we do, how to train on it, what, the, what are the proper steps and procedures, and, and it'll allow us to uh, solidify our succession plan for every employee within the department. And I think that's one of the things that gets me excited about the whole process is that we're going to be able to involve everybody within the department. It's not just going to be an administration, administration thing. It's going to be, you know, we'll get our crew leads involved, we'll get equipment operators involved, just to develop the procedures for what they do every day, since they're the ones that do it every day. All right, well, we want to definitely thank the community for making time to be here again. I hope uh, people are enjoying these. I know we got some good feedback from the Parks and Rec uh, Town Hall, and we're going to continue on. I don't know yet which department is next month. I keep trying to get communications up here as they kind of reverse the, but then no one knows how to run the technology if they're up here, and, but we're going to figure that out eventually to showcase what they do. Uh, but we'll, we'll, be, we'll be back again next month uh, to talk about another department and, and hopefully show and tell is our mission and how we're living out our mission every day of serving our community, making our citizens our priority. And I want to thank you, Marvin and Matt. I want to thank, again, everyone who, who is watching this or will watch it. Uh, and if you have any questions coming out of this, make sure to log in to Palm Coast Connect, submit a case, we'll answer those questions. And stay tuned for some wonderful things happening, including accreditation, increased efficiencies, and uh, more uh, training and development so that we are prepared to serve our community. So, again, thank you very much. Thanks to Communications once again for running this presentation, and we'll see you all next time.